Hey guys, happy new year. First episode of the year for Foresight TV. I am today talking with Grant Simmons, who is an expert in all things SEO. You're going to get to know him better. We're going to have a great conversation. Um, but before I actually get into him and ask him to tell us who he is and what he's an expert at, we are going to run this. Hey guys, Steve Moran here. That's great. I, 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 you know, I watch it every, we've had, we've been using it for about two years and it makes me smile every time. Um, uh, so, um, so Grant, you presented at the Smash Conference in Las Vegas that Bailey Beacon um, organizes. Uh, you were a big hit. Um, you have two things that you did that, of course, made you just really stand out. The first is I'd kill for your accident, accent, um, you know, because it just makes you co way cooler. And the second thing is, is you started with a whole bunch of stuff about Tom Cruise. But let's talk about you and who you are and what you're an expert in and what you do. Sounds great. Thanks for that intro, Steve. Yes, it was fun uh, speaking at Smash Conference. Um, so my name is Grant Simmons. Um, I am a fractional SEO at a few agencies where I help drive SEO strategy, so driving traffic through organic channels. I have my own agency, Brilliant Strategy, where I also help folks out in how to drive traffic. And, uh, you know, I've got an agency background. I have a somewhat of a senior housing background, having run for rent and homes.com. Um, and I've been in this business for way longer than I want to admit. And I still don't have a great little animated entry like you did. So, <laughs> well, well, we 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 could hook we could hook you up with our 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 guy. Although he's in some troubled part of the world where they've got war and chaos and stuff, and and sometimes he's really fast, and sometimes we simply can't get a hold of him uh, because his his the world he lives in is very chaotic. Um, in fact, we're waiting for a couple more intros right now and. I got some ideas about tweaking some of the stuff we've done. So um, I'm actually really, um, uh, you know, one of the, I remember you talking a lot about building trust and uh, that, and, and that being a part of this whole SEO game. And I think that SEO is something that everybody, everybody sort of needs, knows they need to do better, but they don't really know what to do. Um, and so let's just actually talk a little bit about, I mean, what makes, how, why is it, maybe we actually even start, first, the first question I had, does that yes. SEO, and I will tell you that in our own organization, Senior Living Foresight, so I'm going to go a little bit on a tangent here, we spend a lot of time trying to figure out whether SEO makes any difference for us and, or not, because we sort of have a very known kind of niche market, but so does SEO matter First, does it matter for us? And second, does it matter for senior living operators? It matters for anyone that would like to drive traffic to their website from Google or Bing or Yahoo Search. So from that standpoint, if everyone out there has enough traffic that they're quite happy and they're quite happy paying for it through Google Ads or something like that, marvelous, then you don't need SEO. But if you're looking for traffic that is more relevant, more connected, more aligned with who you are and how you present yourself, then yes, SEO is important. And maybe I can just then add a little bit of meat on those frames, which, which says SEO is about showing up for what you do best, what you do well, and what you should be found for when people search. So when you put it in that context, people are searching. We know 6 billion people uh, in a time period, I think it's 6 billion searches a, a day from Google. So when you look at that, people are searching. So if they're searching for your products or services, in this case, searching for senior housing or anything else like that, you'd like to connect with them so that you can turn them into leads and customers. So SEO is important. Okay. So I'm now um, Acme Senior Living Organization. And I am convinced that I need to improve my SEO game and I've heard about this amazing guy, Grant Simmons, 
who uh, is an expert in this. And so I get on a Zoom call with him and um, I say, okay, well, yeah, I get it. I, I want to get better at SEO. I have no idea what to do, where to start. Where do I start? Okay. So you start by defining uh, who you are, really. So just like any marketing, you want to make sure uh, it's really clear who you are, what you do, and what differentiates you. So more often than not in senior housing, senior living, um, it's to do with location. Uh, it's to do with the type of care that you, you, you know, provide some of the amenities or anything else like that. So the first thing is really to, to say, do I adequately explain who I am and what I do? And then you have to look at, do you have the content that explains it better than anyone else might in your particular niche, whether it's, I say, location or type of care or aging or whatever else it might be. And then you've got to say, does my website, is it structured so the search engines can really understand my content in a way that is really clear, um, is really differentiated, and once again, includes who I am and what I do in, in ways like, for example, navigation. When I get to the homepage, do I know where I should go next to find additional information or find more information about why I'm searching? If I land on a, a page about memory care, does it have a fully satisfying experience through the content with videos, with examples, with bullet points, with FAQs, whatever it might be, compared to the competition, does it satisfy the query better than anyone else does? If that's that's the case, generally, if your site can be crawled, which means you fix the technical stuff, it can be indexed, which means, once again, the content is great and the content is fully satisfying, then Google should reward you with traffic. So the way I start is competitive analysis, looking at where the gaps are in a particular client's website, there's any issues from a standpoint of either technical from a crawling standpoint or content from an explanation standpoint. And then we build those, all those things together and say, what else? Why aren't you ranking for what you should be ranking for? What else is missing from a standpoint of social standpoint of links from a standpoint of brand presence? All those things are important. So there, there is a, a process, but it really comes down to does Google know who you are and what you're great at? And then... Okay. Yeah, that's it. <laughs> so it sounds like I'm exhausted already, by the way. Um, I just, um, so I, I think that one of the, you know, I think that what I hear, but it's a little bit like the old, what's that old joke about you, you and your buddy are out walking in the woods and you encounter a bear. You just have to be able to run faster than your buddy, not faster than the bear to stay ahead of everybody. Is it, is that, I mean, that, so sounds, that sounds good enough. It is a, a net sum game. So if someone wins, someone loses and vice versa. So, so I, so I'm actually, so I'm actually better off as a, as a senior living operator, the, the crummier my competition is in this web game, the easier it is for me to win in a given marketplace. That's pretty, that's pretty fair. Yeah. And, and you're looking at the quality of content, the quality of crawlability of your website, where the search engine can actually find the content. And then you are looking at, you know, social presence, links, uh, local citations, if there's a location involved. So, yeah, all those things are really important. And what you're trying to do is beat the competition, not just through numbers, but through quality. So it's no use saying my, my competition has 100 words on their page, so I'm going to write 110. Um, you know, you want to make sure there's quality content, quality links, quality local citations, and, and quality architecture that pe allows people to find what, what they're looking for. So one of the, the things that um, I, I guess uh, maybe we need to actually back up a little bit and start. Well, actually, I'm going to ask this question. Um, what is what does quality content mean? Sure. I mean, can I, can I, so as a, for instance, let me ask this question because I'm dying. It's, I'm really fascinated by it. Can I go use chat GPT and, and create quality content? Okay. So for people out there, <laughs> chat G GPT is a system created by uh, AI uh, and it allows you to enter a question, you get an answer out. So let's think of it this way. If I, if I talk to you and I say, what color are your glasses? There is only one answer, you know, they are brown. Now, perception, whatever, but they're brown or black. Maybe. Um, 
But if you enter that into chat GDP and it knows about Steve Moran, it knows about your glasses you wear, you're going to get the same answer no matter what input, the same input, you're getting the same answer every time. So the quality of the prompt or the quality of the input on chat GPT is going to directly affect the quality of the output. And quality means, to get back to that definition, unique, written by an expert with someone with authority on that topic and someone that has trust based on that authority and expertise. And a new factor that Google introduced in December is this idea of experience. If you're writing about something, you should have experience of that particular thing. Different from expertise, it will be like, if you're talking about memory care, you should have experience in memory care or else that, that content has less quality quotient to it. Chat GPT is very uh, programmed because it's programmed on language and knowledge from, I think it's four years ago. So not everything is going to be updated. Not everything's going to be right. And the same input's going to get the same output. So that's not unique. Plus, Google's trying to work on a way of identifying just AI-generated content that doesn't have value and not ranking that kind of content. So you could do it. And I say, everyone, play around with it because it's fun. But uh, I wouldn't say it's going to differentiate your uh, SEO strategy for a senior housing or senior living uh, company. Well, and I would just, you know, I've, I've spent quite a bit of time playing with it. And I'm actually, uh, before I got on our broadcast here, somebody a few days ago posted something on LinkedIn about how to use uh, chat GPT to create great headlines. But it's not just as simple as saying create a great headline because you you got to ask it to do twists. And so I, I went back trying to find it because I, I saw it when I was on the road. But I think it's a good tool. But I think the thing that's really important for me about chat GPT is that you sitting in, in Virginia Beach, if you put in there, write me an article about what's so great about memory care, and I put in the same prompt, write me a great article on what's so great about memory care, we'd likely get the same content, right? And yeah. that became yeah. becomes not very valuable. But it might be a place to start or to get to inspiration. It, it's a place to start, but I think, uh, you know, the real place to start for what's called your money or your life queries, which they deal with finance, health, um, anything that requires a payment, you know, a large payment. So generally, senior housing falls into your money or your life type queries. Uh, Google has a slightly higher standard or a higher standard than other content. So if you're writing, that's where they introduce that experience. There was a lot of people out there reviewing things they never actually used but they're reviewing them from other reviews and building up content from that. Chat GPT is really building based on other experiences and other content. So although it can work in certain scenarios, I'm, I wouldn't recommend it for writing uh, experienced content or uh, as Google says, eat content, eat content, experience, expertise, authority, and trust. They're really the key components that, that search engines are looking for and their algorithms are programmed to actually rank so yeah okay so i'm 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 watching this i'm part of the audience now and i'm thinking okay you guys have been chatting for 15 minutes and it's been really really interesting i still have no idea what to do how do i figure out what's most important to write about it's it's a very fair point so i i, I talked to actually at smash about a couple of things which were triggers and tickles so, and Tom Cruise, but- And Tom um, Cruise, yeah, triggers yeah. and tickles and Tom Cruise, three that's, teams. That's right, that's right. So um, triggers are, are times when someone actually has a need and they go to search. So they put something in Google, let's just say Google is a generic search engine, they put something in Google and they expect to get great results. And obviously you wanna show up for that to connect with those queries. Um, those kind of queries are triggered by life events, you know, mum fell over, uh, life events, you know, dad's forgetting stuff, uh, or life events like, you know, mum's been living with us for a year and it's just, I'm going crazy. So these kind of things, they're trigger events, and you can kind of guess what those trigger events are by doing really good research. Because you're not going to cover everything, but if you do a research in a tool like, for example, InLinks, so it's, it's a tool I, I recommend and I do some work for them, but InLinks, SEMrush, 
ask the public. These are all things that um, essentially they give you questions that people are asking. So great tools for finding out what people are searching for. And then you make sure that your content answers those triggered queries. So that's a really good place to start. You can also even go to Google. And in Google, if you start typing in, what do I do with my mum who's 86? You'll get suggestions within the search box that will basically give you what people are searching for or what Google thinks you might be looking for. You can mine those. And then also on the Google search results page, you have people also asked or PAA. And that's those questions that appear on Google search results that Google is saying either people have asked them or we think that's what people are looking for. So you can mine those, that information and you know, write answers around those. That's a really good place to start to connect with trigger events. The other content I talked about was tickles. So tickles are a little bit different from a standpoint of you're not expecting people that are searching to connect with that content. But what you'd like to do is when people are searching for associated themes, like mum's getting old, what do I do? Um, uh, I hate to talk about, my mum's 86, she's not old. Um, but, uh, you know, they're searching for things like, you know, what senior activities are there in my neighborhood or in my, my area? It doesn't necessarily align 100% with your business, but if you show up for that, you're building trust, you're building some authority and having your brand in those search results can help for next time when someone is doing a trigger query or someone has clicked through and seen your site, it helps reinforce that what you guys are about. And so maybe next time when you should come up in the search results, you might be in position two, but they already have some familiarity with you. So they click on you, not the position number one. And we've seen that happen a lot with authoritative sites within local areas or even in a national stage. So one of the challenges, one of the things that drives senior living operators crazy is, um, and it's probably the most crazy making thing of all, is that uh, a place for mom and uh, caring and just as disclosure, I have a relationship with caring, but people, I hear people complaining more about a place for mom is that no matter what I do, um, they spend so much money on AdWords that I'm never going to be able to get to the top. What do I, what do I, do you have thoughts on what do I do about that? Uh, does, does it matter as long as I've got organic ranking? Um, so, yeah. So there is no reason you can't do both. And there are studies that show if you have a paid search result and an organic result, Generally, people click more on the organic results, but they tend to click a little bit more when you have both a paid ad and organic ad. And I have to look up that study exactly, but that, that'll be number one. Number two is obviously in most scenarios, when someone is searching for something with a local intent, you get a local pack at the top of Google results. We've all seen this where you have a map or you have just a list with a map. And that's a great opportunity for local location-based businesses to show up. That's a matter of having a Google My Business account and optimizing that account, posting to that account, and making sure that Google sees from reviews and the location where people are searching from align with where you are. So it's no use building up something that's in two towns over. You want to obviously show up for you in the metro area where you might exist for the specific queries. So you've optimized your Google My Business profile. You've got local citations that reinforce your trust. Um, so local citations from everything from local directories to your local small business bureau or whatever. Um, and so that can help push you above the aggregator sites that, that are out there. And every industry pretty much has aggregator sites. Mm -hmm. You can beat them on the longer tail, which is why we talk about tickle content, which is stuff that is not necessarily in the moment where those guys are, are paying or super optimizing around, but they're more around other problems that people want to solve that you can show up for and build the trust. So next time people will click on you first. 
So I'm reading a book right now that's talking about how to do great, uh, create great offers. And this is not senior living. It's sort of more for people who are doing selling content online. But it's a really it's a really fascinating book. And one of the things that that the author talks about there that I'm, I'm really intrigued by is you have sort of the obvious thing and problems that you you're selling. And then you have this psychological um the psychological needs. And so the, the example, two examples that, that, that really have intrigued me and I've written an art, it hasn't published yet, but I've written a little bit about this, but it, in, in the London subway, there was a lot of complaint about the amount of time that it took between trains. I think it was London anyway, doesn't matter. Um, and, and to add additional capacity would have been billions of dollars. But what they did is they came in and they put these signboards up at every station that showed how long it was going to be until the na- next train would come with lights showing exactly where it was. And it turned out that it made people, they didn't change the wait time, but it made people a lot happier. You see the same thing at Disney, you're waiting these long lines, but they create all these little mini things that you can look at and occupy your mind so it doesn't seem so long. And so I'm wondering, are there places that you, I mean, you talked a little about, I want to come back to this tickles idea, because it sounds like that's what you're really talking about, is are there non-obvious places where we can sort of meet those psychological needs that could really make a difference? Sure. And that's on and offline. I mean, you've got Maslow's pyramid, you know, of needs. And I think the same thing happens in online marketing. You know, you have the psychological need where, to to your point, it's not a, formed opinion or a formed actual need, but you need to have some kind of psychological building of trust. So tickles definitely come about in those ways, but it, it you know it can also be appearing in a local newspaper, you know, um, even if it's not about uh, a, a sales piece, you're actually generating trust and awareness. So I think that's really key, you know, and, and it comes down to ultimately, you know, at the top of the period, the self-actualization, I think from my standpoint, that's when people really understand who you are and what you do online. Um, and, and to get there, there is a series of steps for you to get there because no one, when they first search, knows who you are unless they've already interacted with you. So right. And we're typically step- selling something that that people don't care about until they need it. Until they care about it. That's right. Until they care about it. That's right. And 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 so the good news, in some sense, the good news is is that you've got a pretty level playing field, right? Because, uh, you know, you wake up one morning uh, or you wake up in the middle of the night and you get a call that mom has fallen or you discover you go visit over Christmas and she hasn't been eating and she's losing weight and you go, oh my God, what do I do? And the first thing most people are going to do is Go to Google, right? And they search for the problem. They don't search for the solution. They don't say, where's my nearest you know, assisted living uh, care center or anything. They, don't, they normally say, what to do when your mom is losing weight and not eating? You know, uh, they, they do searches like that. So those kind of longer tail searches, that really uh, you know, opportunity to connect with the need, that's more of a trigger because they want to know that. But the ticker would be showing up for you know, uh, how to make elders eat more. You know, that would be more of a tickle because you're not selling, you're not pitching, you're just building expertise, which is building trust. To your point on the uh, subway, I don't think it was the underground, but they do have those signs. Um, It's just perception. Are you more satisfied with the current status quo or the current situation based on the inputs you're getting than if you're not. And it comes down to when you get to a page that has content about the question that you have, the the challenge you have or whatever, are you seeing relevant and related elements within that page that help you understand whether it's an infographic or FAQs, facts about that particular issue, or whether it's a chart or stats from someone talking about it from a academic standpoint, you need to make sure people get satisfied in your content because that perception of is this page complete is exactly what Google's algorithms are looking for when they assess content. So yeah, um, if we're looking at that scenario of how do we change something to, to build more trust or confidence, it would be how do you improve your ease of navigation of your site, the speed of your site, the 
uh, ability to find information on your site, the natural hierarchy, what I call paths to satisfaction, how people can move further down into your site to get a more satisfying response. These are all things that are really important from a perception standpoint. So people really have trust in you. And for your money or your life, coming back to that, Google is looking for trustworthy sources. One of the questions they say is, would you give this person your credit card? They ask that of their search quality rater guides who are assessing websites who help build the algorithm. So if you think about, is this site trustworthy? They're not looking for sites to have a mass of ads at the top that stop people getting the content. They're even not looking for sites that have a really big header image before you get to the content. Thereafter, is the content there available and does it answer the query? Man, I'm passionate about this, you know? Go. Oh, man, I love you. I'm a, I, you've just given me a, a, a headline. I'm not sure what I'm going to do with it. But would your 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 money shot quote was, um, uh, would you give these people, this company, your credit card number? Yeah. I, I guess, so I'm... Where do I go? I guess that's something I want to say. So I, 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 when I was at CES yesterday, I, I was talking to uh, a company. They're still there, so they probably won't see this, but uh, and they'll know who they are. But you would, nobody else would know who they are. And um, we were talking about social media, and I was just talking about how, in my view, use social media to build your reputation. Not so you're going to generate leads, but so that when you pick up the phone to call them or you run into them at a conference, they're going to they're going to go, oh, yeah, you're that guy who's yeah. talking about and they're, they want to have a conversation with you. But what I see happening, and I think that this is reflective of senior living, is that on their websites, they spend a lot of time talking about how great they are. But. If my mom has just had an event or my dad has just had an event, I don't really actually care very much about how they are at this point in time. I want to know, I need to know what to do. And I don't think there's enough of that information. But I can tell you why people don't put that what to do, because they are thinking as well, if I put what to do, that's not going to generate leads. Right. And in fact, if I tell them what to do, it might even help my competitor. And so I shouldn't do that. How would you respond to that? Well, building trust. It's about giving and having a sense of content altruism, which you don't expect immediate return. But you should, you should, if all the stars aligned, get a return on investing in good quality informational content to build trust. And Google will also reward you from a standpoint of being authoritative. So uh, I do, I agree 100%. And I talked about this way back when I, I spoke at Smash twice. The first time I think was 2015 and it might be 26. Someone's going to correct me, but um, it really comes down to how do you build trust? Not looking at the whole lead gen as the ultimate judge of whether what, whether what you've done is the ideal scenario for your lead gen. Ultimately, yes, lead generation is really important, but people aren't just searching and immediately signing up or immediately going through your process to, to enter. They have to do their research. And when they do their research, they're going to four or five websites, most likely, and they're going to choose the one that has the best information, you know, demonstrates the most altruism in giving out information and content. So that's why I come back to that big circle around it's about the competitive environment. If we believe in any business, someone is going to spend X amount of big ticket item and not do their research today in 2023, then we're fooling ourselves. Senior living is no different than buying a car. And, and I, I mean that in the you know, information retrieval sense. You know, people do research, they find roughly what they need first, and then they start to filter down to goods or services or brands that meet those needs. But no one actually understands fully their needs before they go searching. They're searching to find those answers. And if you can be there, 
your facility can be there, your company can be there, then you have the opportunity of getting a foot in the door. So you know, marketing qualifying leads, sales qualifying leads, I look at micro conversions being much more important, which is around engagement. Did I engage? Yeah, I, I just, uh, one of the things, that, you know, as I look at websites, I just see so much features and I see so little helpful information. And I just, I mean, and I, I, I've been a senior living con consumer. I'm inside the industry and it's horrible. And so I can only imagine what it's like if I'm not, an, if I'm, I don't have any knowledge. And it's, what do I do about my mom? What do I do about my dad? What do I do if I'm an older person? I'm, I, I've had a fall and I want to keep myself safe. Um, and so uh, one of the things that is crazy making to me is I don't see on any senior living sites a just generic, here's how to figure out whether you need care and what level of care you or senior living you might need. And there are some tools out there. There's some people, there were some people selling things that, because I'm going to say this because I'm going to get some pushback because there are some companies out there, people I like to know that have have these, these tools where they lead you through a questionnaire. But those are all designed not to help the customer. They're, help, they're designed to help the community gather more information to sell to them. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about something that's just purely helpful. And, but I, and I see the same thing on LinkedIn. People are so on, on the vendor side. People want to, it's all got to be leads. I, I don't want to give away too much information for free. Now, my team will tell you, I give, tend to give away too much for free when I'm in one-on-one -on -one conversations. But if you look at my LinkedIn feed, if you look at our website, we create so much great content that's free that you just go use it. It'll transform your organizations. And you know what? We get a lot of business because we do that. That's a hundred percent. Look, I, I'm doing this. That's right. <laughs> I, this I do, is what you're I doing. I do webinars. Right? I, I write. I I obviously speak on stage. You know, um, I you know I I present. I do whatever I can because ultimately, um, building trust and authority um, is about people understanding who you are. And, and look, we do go around these big circles. We started off with you know how do I show up or why why should I rank in Google. It comes down to making sure you're different and expert. And, 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 and I don't think in senior living or, or most industries, there is generally an altruistic approach to giving content and tools that will fundamentally improve the users or the site visitors' lives. And that can be, you know, mortgage calculators, they're still, you don't get an answer all the time until you put your email address in, you know, to me, that is a disconnect between, you know, being an expert and, and being a marketer. And there's no reason you can't be both. And there's no reason you can't. Leads are not a, a dirty, <laughs> not a dirty word. You know, leads, ultimately, we want leads. But there has to be not this, not this linear approach, because the linear approach is old school. The old school funnel, yeah, there's a top. But people come in and out of that funnel all over the place. So if we can tickle them at the top, they're going to come back in in different places when there's different triggers. And I think that to me is how we want to address content in 2023 and how we want to look at our marketing strategies in 2023. There's no waste to showing up, to being seen, to reinforcing your expertise and identity. And there's definitely value in, uh, no, well, there's definitely no value in not doing that. You, you have to do that. You have to differentiate yourself. So, Online, offline, uh, podcasts like this, tools that can help people, uh, content that satisfies queries, um, being altruistic in, in giving information and, and really sharing the, the expertise you have, sharing stories for social proof so that people understand why they can trust you. That is holistically SEO and, and holistically you know, brand building for organic traffic. So um, um, let's put up your contact information. I've still got two more quick questions I want to do. We're, we're past time here, but this is just amazing. Um, the first question is, what about consumer reviews? Do they matter? How much do they matter? Um, thoughts on that? Yeah, 100%. They matter a lot. And um, the, the bad reviews matter as well. So uh, Google um, does not give as much credibility to reviews where they're all positive. It realizes there might be some manipulation and it's looking at other signals as well than just that. But uh, Google reviews, uh, reviews on Google My Business, really, really key. 
really important. Generally, social proof, testimonials, reviews on a website, also really important for brand building and for trust building. So yeah, reviews, 100%, very important. Testimonials, very important. Yeah. So one of the things I just it, it, it is the, the caring.com has probably got the best, they and, and Google reviews have the best review sites out there. And because we have a relationship with caring.com, I, I spend a lot of time talking to them about reviews and they've got an awards program that they do um, for the people who do the best job of reviews. Their data shows that having staying current and having good reviews gets generates, I don't know, something like three or four times as many leads. It's just crazy. And yet probably not even 1% of the companies that are on there actually work on the reviews. And it is just, I, I don't understand it. Well, when we're talking about that E of experience that Google's added on to their search quality ratings guidelines, yeah. asking your for both your guests and asking the adult child or asking the, the folks that are put it, putting their, their uh, elders in care, I think the key thing there is asking them for reviews or how you can do better or what you did great. All those things are really valuable for building a better company. And then asking them, once you've built that trust, asking them for review is much easier. A lot of people ask for cold reviews. You know, like, like hey, thank you for your mom's. Can you give us a review? Without any kind of context, the personalization of, of the request and the personalization of actually knowing someone, it's much easier to get reviews. Much yep. easier. Yeah. And then the last question I have for you is what about social media? Since we're talking senior living primarily, I'm, my expertise is really LinkedIn. But when, as we're looking at social media and Facebook, Facebook thoughts on how to do Facebook better and maybe in terms of both paid and organic and what impact that has, if any, on, on search. Yeah. So, so Facebook um, is actually a pretty good uh, lead gen. Here we're talking about leads now. Lead gen around the right queries. Um because you can actually localize it quite well. And once again, you don't want to do something broad. If you're in the Denver area, or you're in Lakewood, you want to target Lakewood, not Denver. And you want to test that from a standpoint of, of location. And Google doesn't allow you to do zip code, but Facebook can. Um, so social media, paid social media can work really well. Um, it works well when you're providing snippets of good information or videos of great experiences. Can work well it's a lot of people consume there and even TikTok. i actually have a legal client that generates business off TikTok by by pushing short form video out there so don't discount social media as both a lead gen and a expertise building platform i think it's great you know organically from my standpoint you've got to be consistent on social you can't just post once a month and my thing is don't just post what you're posting on your blog you know, unless you add value. So adding value into any social post is better than, you know, and still a link back to your blog is fine, but adding some insights, adding a snippet, adding what key value people are going to get out when they click is really the key thing. And keeping your Facebook profile in that case, you know, updated and, and fresh and, uh, you know, talking about the events you're doing in your senior care facility and things like that. I think it's really important to do that. So people understand you're there, you're engaged, and, and why they should engage with you. So that's it. I love SEO better, though. So Yeah, of course. Well, I was just saying, and I was just sort of coming back to the final story with SEO, and then we'll I'll let you go. But I, um, I, I somebody posted a, on LinkedIn, this is LinkedIn, so more B2B, but somebody posted a story about having to come in, uh, an executive having to come in and work on Christmas Day and blowing the Christmas and how terrible they felt about it, and how at the end of the day it was amazing. I took that post, I added a little commentary, just oh, this is like the best Christmas story I've heard all season. I reposted it, and I was blown away. It is the highest traffic po LinkedIn post I have ever had, as a, and it's a repost. And it's been looked at, I don't know, 45,000 times or something like that is just insane. And so this idea of just adding value and creating more value is so powerful. Yeah. Grant, thank you very much. This has been amazing. I know we could probably do this another hour. Um, if you are looking for SEO help, you're looking for a fractional, fractional CMO, uh, reach out to him. 
And thank you very much for watching. We've got a bunch of great guests coming up. Grant, I'm going to do, I'm going to sign us off here. You can hang on for just a second. I'd like to touch bases with you. Thank you.